You guys have been asking for a video on microplastics for a while now, but there just wasn't a lot of evidence of health effects in humans. Well, that all changed last week. A team of Italian scientists published a study looking at microplastics and cardiovascular disease. Okay, what on earth are microplastics? Plastic degrades with time, leaving behind small particles. Particles smaller than five millimeters long are called microplastics. If the particle is smaller than one micron, so what micron is a thousand times smaller than a millimeter, if the particle is even smaller than that, it's called a nanoplastic. There are a number of studies in test tubes and in lab animals suggesting that microplastics might in fact be detrimental for several biological processes, but we know that those often don't pan out in humans. So this study is kind of a big deal in this field. So they looked at around 300 patients that had plaque in their arteries, in the artery wall, specifically in their carotid arteries, so the arteries of the neck, and they had enough plaque that it was causing stenosis. So that means a narrowing of the artery. And so these patients were scheduled to have their plaque removed surgically. So the investigators figured, well, we're going to remove this anyway. We're going to strip this plaque. We're going to have it out. Why don't we look at it and see what's in there? So that's exactly what they did. They analyzed the plaque. They looked at it under a very powerful microscope called an electron microscope. And they found microplastics inside the plaque in over half of the patients, 58%. They could actually see under the electron microscope these jagged particles inside the plaque and even inside specific cells that are present in plaque, the macrophages, these cells that chomp up foreign particles and other things that need to be removed. Okay, how do the microplastics even get in there? It turns out that if they're small enough, they can cross membranes and they can access the bloodstream and they can even get inside the artery wall, it looks like. They also found a correlation between the presence of microplastics and the level of inflammatory markers in plaque. But the most headline-grabbing finding was that these patients who had microplastics in their plaque, in their artery wall, had a higher risk of suffering a cardiovascular event. So heart attacks, strokes, or death of any cause. And there was a big difference, over a fourfold increase in risk in these patients with microplastics in their plaque. So this obviously raised some eyebrows. Uh, this study got a lot of press. Uh, it raises concerns. Now, I've learned from experience of doing this over a few years that the reactions we get to our videos depend less on the strength of the evidence that we have and more on how people feel about the topic that's being discussed. And I don't think we're going to get a lot of resistance to the idea that Pieces of plastic inside the walls of the artery might be bad for cardiovascular disease because most people already have an idea of plastic as this unnatural, maybe even this toxic thing. But it's very important in science that we address every question with the same principles and the same standards, regardless of how we feel about it. So this study is what we call an observational study. The investigators didn't intervene. They didn't tell the participants to do anything different. They just watched and that's completely understandable because you can't randomize people to go eat a bunch of plastic for years just to see what happens. But it does mean that we take the same cautions that we would with any observational study. For example, they didn't look at the diets of the participants at all. They didn't look at their socioeconomic status. In fact, they don't know where the microplastics came from. If it was from foods or from drinks or if they were inhaled. It's entirely possible, for example, that people who have these microplastics in their plaque are the participants that are eating more junk food out of convenience stores wrapped in plastic packaging, and that that's the problem. The quality of the foods is what's raising risk of disease, not the plastics themselves. So in this scenario, the plastic would be kind of an innocent bystander, just a marker of a poor diet and maybe a poor lifestyle. This scenario is entirely consistent with the evidence. So we have to consider these possibilities before we arrive at a conclusion. So we need more studies on microplastics to see if this is a consistent result, to tighten some of these loose ends, and to see if microplastics truly are causing disease. Now, one thing is scientific certainty. Another thing is personal choice. Some people may prefer to limit exposure to microplastics just in case 
They are later shown to be the cause of disease. And I don't see a problem with that strategy. So how would we go about doing that, minimizing exposure? Microplastics can get into our bodies both through ingestion and inhalation. If they're in the air, we can actually breathe them in. So measures to reduce exposure include avoiding single-use plastics, like plastic straws or plastic utensils. Also, not microwaving food in direct contact with plastic, like takeout containers with the lining or just plastic packaging that comes around food. Also, using glass bottles for water instead of uh, plastic bottles. Let me reiterate that we don't have strong evidence that any of this truly makes a difference for human health. I don't want to fear monger. I don't want to start fads. This might make no actual difference. It's probably better environmentally, but health-wise, it's unclear. And there's certainly a lot of things that you should be paying a lot of attention to before you worry about microplastics. Just healthy diet, exercise, not smoking, all these things that you've heard a million times that have mountains of evidence compared to microplastics. Another common question is regarding fish and seafood because unfortunately, microplastics are very prevalent in the oceans, so they can accumulate in these animals. Now, telling somebody to avoid fish for their heart health would be really tricky, to say the least, because most of our evidence points in the opposite direction. Most people who eat fish have better heart health. And this holds even after we adjust for a number of lifestyle factors, and even comparing to other specific foods, like vegetables, for example, fish looks pretty good. So if the microplastics are causing disease in the arteries or in the heart, it seems like something else in the fish would be outweighing that. It's possible that microplastics have accumulated more recently, and so the health effects populationally will only be seen later on. This is a common question. It's a reasonable question. Bottom line is the science of looking at effect of microplastics on human health is brand new. This is literally one of the first studies to do this. So it's a bit of a personal call. Some people go with the available evidence and have some fish. Some people prefer to avoid fish and get their omega-3s from some other source, algae or algae oil or something. Other people go with farm fish, which still has microplastics, but a bit less, and it might have some other issues. Right now, we just don't have enough evidence to know if one of these strategies is better. I know that giving false certainty and making absolute statements is really popular on social media. I'd rather be unpopular and just tell you honestly what's known and what isn't, because that's a big part of science. Acknowledging what's known, even if it's uncomfortable. Okay, this is, seems to be the case. And this over here is an area of uncertainty. Scientists are still working on it. And as we learn more, I'll be more than happy to report. How does plaque form in our arteries anyway? We looked at that in some detail in a previous recent video. And here's a workout that can actually help shrink the plaque in your arteries. Check those out. I'll see you over there. <laughs>